welcome to the Geomestic channel. Today's lesson we're going to talk about what it means to simplify a radical. Now before we get into that, I want to back up a little bit and take a look at a number pattern. So this pattern may be familiar to you, maybe you've never seen it before. Okay, so this number pattern right here, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, and so on. If you've seen this before, you might recognize this as the first 10 perfect square numbers. Perfect square numbers, if you don't know, are numbers that if you multiply numbers by themselves, you end up with these perfect squares. For example, 1 squared, which just means 1 times 1, 1 times itself, is equal to 1. 2 squared, 2 times itself, is 4. 3 squared, 3 times 3, is 9, and so on. 4 squared, 5 squared, etc. Now, these perfect square numbers um, are very useful for a lot of different reasons, but we're going to leave that pattern up there at the top to help us out for today's lesson. Now, just like with most mathematical operations, every um, function, every mathematical operation, or nearly every mathematical every operation has an inverse or a way to go backwards or to get back to where you started. And squares are no exceptions. There's an inverse to a square, and you may have seen this before as a square root or a radical. So a square root is a number that when multiplied by itself gives the desired quantity. For example, the square root of, let's just say 36, means what number multiplied by itself would get you to 36. And we know that the square root of 36 is 6, because 6 times 6 is 36. So squares and square roots are inverses of each other. And each one of these perfect square numbers has a whole number root. So the square root of 81 is just 9. The square root of 100 is just 10. But if we take a look at something like this, And we wanted to know what is the square root of 20. Now the square root of 20, we can see the 20 is not in our pattern up here. The square root of 20 is somewhere in between 16 and 25, or the square roots of 16 and 25, which would be um, 4 and 5. So I know the square root of 20 is somewhere between 4 and 5. Now depending on the problem that you're doing and how you're using your answer, uh, it might be okay to just estimate that the square root of 20 is somewhere between 4 and 5. Maybe it's okay to just leave your answer as the square root of 20. Uh, it might be uh, beneficial for you to get the actual decimal or a, a rounded decimal because we don't know the actual decimal because square roots of non-perfect squares are irrational numbers. The decimal goes on forever, but you can punch that into your calculator, type in the square root of 20, and that would get you something like 4.47 something something. Now, um, in a lot of cases, it is beneficial to simplify the radical. Um, similar in a way that we reduce fractions to their lowest possible terms. It's effective um, for communicating your numbers. It's very important to make sure that when you're communicating your mathematics that you are looking at the same things. So, what does it mean to simplify a radical? I'm going to show you two different methods today. Um, both of these methods rely on prime factorization to get to the simplest terms. So we'll go back to the square root of 20 for a second. Okay, so the square root of 20. Now with square roots, what we want to do is we want to take this number and we want to break it down into its factors. So factors, if you remember, factors are just the numbers that if you multiply together get to this value of 20. So if you think about what are some numbers that if you multiply together are going to get you 20. So one example, a couple different ways to go about it, but I know that four times five is equal to 20. So the square root of 20 is the same as the square root of four times five. Now with roots, we can break them apart. Once we have um, factors, we can take those apart and we can separate them into different um, roots. Meaning something like this. The square root of 4 times 5 is the same thing as if I separate them into their um, separate roots and say the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. And where the simplification comes in is because we know that 4 is a perfect square, so the square root of 4 is a whole number, 
meaning the square root of four is just two. Two times two is four, so the square root of four is two. And I have the square root of five, which is not a perfect square. And the square root of five, we leave as the square root of five. Five is a prime number. It doesn't have any factors other than one and five. So we leave this as two times the square root of five. So this is the simplified version of this. Now you might think, well, simple. This is just a single number inside of a root. This has something inside a root and something outside the root. Why is that simpler? Well, again, in certain situations, uh, it might be helpful to have this value outside of the root because we can do um, maybe some reduction in a fraction or maybe uh, it's just going to be helpful to be able to see this is a simplified root of 5 versus a non-simplified root of 20. Okay, so this would be the simplified root of the square root of 20. Let's look at another one. So in this method that we're using, um, it's best if we can find the largest perfect square that can be divided out of our number here. So if we can find that largest um, factor, that largest perfect square factor, it's going to give us the shortest path to our simplified root. Now, it's okay if we don't find the largest perfect square, we can still make it work. It's just gonna be uh, a few more steps. And I'll show you the example here with the square root of 72. So if you think of some roots, some factors of 72, what two things multiply together to get 72? Let's start with this one. Let's say four times 18. So four times 18 is 72. So these are equivalent. If I continue on this route, I can break these just like I did the last one into two separate roots, the square root of four and the square root of 18. Whereas the square root of four is just two, And now I'm here. Now in the last example, we were able to stop here because in the root, we had a prime number. Well, this time we don't have a prime number inside the root, we've got 18, which can also be simplified. So if I bring this back around, I've got two square root 18, but two square root 18 is the same thing as two times roots of 18, might be nine and two, which we can break those up square root of nine times the square root of two. So again, I break those roots up into two separate roots. And now I'm again left with a perfect square root. So the square root of nine I know is just three. So I've got two times three times, and then the square root of two. And then finally, two times three is just six. And I've got this square root of two. And two is prime, can't go any further. So I've got the square root of 72 is really just six times the square root of two. And you can see we had a lot of steps to get to that point. And the reason why it took longer than the last one is because we didn't find the largest perfect square that could come out of 72. We found a perfect square, we found four, but then as we kept going, we saw that there was another perfect square we could take out, which was that nine. Okay, now if we do it maybe a little bit of a quicker way, the square root of 72, the largest perfect square that can be divided out of 72 is actually 36 because 36 times 2 is 72. And if we use this perfect square as our first one, knowing that the square root of 36 is just 6, we can get here, which is 6 root 2. Okay, so from the square root of 72 to six times the square root of two, we can get there a couple different ways. Quickest way being finding that largest perfect square that can be divided out of this number. Let's try one more in this method. Square root of 39. 39 might look like a prime number, but it is not. It does have two factors. Um, just a side note, if you do have a prime number uh, as your beginning root, then you're done. You can't simplify a root that is a prime number. But in this case, 39 is not prime. Two factors of 39 that we have are three and 13. Three times 13 is 39. Now we have a little bit of a problem here because neither three nor 13 are perfect squares. So in this case, what do we do? If your factors that you're using are not perfect squares, 
you can't really do much of anything. So to simplify the square root of 39, we might be able to get started here, but we can't really get any further than this. So the square root of 39 is simply the square root of 39, and that one will not simplify. So sometimes it happens where you will not be able to simplify your root. All right, so that's the first method of simplifying your radicals. Second method, uh, a little bit more visual, I call this the factor tree method. So the factor tree method um, is a little bit, I don't know, depending on your tastes, maybe a little less guesswork, a little more systematic. Let's go with, say 54. The square root of 54. So what you're going to do in this method is you're going to make the prime factorization of that number uh, represented by a factor tree. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for two numbers just like we did before. Two numbers that multiply together to get 54. In this case, uh, with the factor tree method, it doesn't really matter if you get perfect squares or non-perfect squares. You're just looking for factors of that value. So two things that multiply together to get 54, we'll start with nine and six. Doesn't matter what factors you use, there's lots of different factors. Nine and six is what we're gonna use for this one. And we're gonna continue that prime factorization, finding factors of these numbers until we get to where we have all primes at the end. So the factors of nine would be three and three. Factors of six would be two and three. So these are all prime numbers. We can't go any further. Three is just three and one. And once we get to primes, I like to just circle them so I know that I can't go any further down that branch. Okay, so at this point, we've got the prime factorization of 54. And what we're going to do is we're gonna look for pairs of primes because again, a square root is what number times itself gets you that value. So if I break it into where I have a, a, a pair of factors, I know that I can take that pair, please, green here, I can take that pair and I can kind of pull it out of that root because three times three is just nine. If I take the square root of nine, I end up with just three. So if I find a pair of factors, I can take out that pair outside of the root and bring it out front. So I've got a pair of threes, I'm gonna bring a three out. Now, that's the only pair that I have. I have another two and another three in here, but any factor that does not have a pair has to stay inside of that square root. So again, pairs come outside, just one. A pair of threes, you write a three outside the root because we've square rooted the nine to get the three. And then I've got the two and the three left over. So any leftovers get multiplied back together inside of the root. Simplifying this, two times three is just six. So I'm left with three square root six. Three times the square root of six. So the square root of 54 simplifies into three times the square root of six. Yeah, that's the factor tree method. Let's do a couple more of those. I'll go with a bigger one this time. So let's say 112, square root of 112. Once again, the method here is to just find some factors of that value. One factor or two factors of 112 would be four and 28. Doesn't matter what factors you use, what order, just find factors. So factors of four, continue down that branch is two and two. Can't go any further here, so I go ahead and circle those. Those are done. 28, factors of 28. We can go with four and seven. Four, again, goes to two and two, which are prime. Seven, also prime, does not go any further. Okay, so we've got our prime factorization. At this point, we look for pairs. We have a couple of pairs. Now pairs don't have to be kind of on the same branch. They can be anywhere. I could use this pair of twos and this pair of twos together. It really doesn't matter. But I've got a pair of twos here. So I'm gonna write a two out front. I got another pair of twos there, which means I've got another two out front. And then finally, I've got this extra seven. It does not have a pair, which goes back inside of the root. Cleaning this up, I've got two times two, which is just four and I've got the seven left over. So the square root of 112 simplified into four times the square root of seven. Good, let's do one more. Last one. 
square root of 30. Factor tree, two factors of 30. We can go with six and five, we can go with three and 10. Doesn't matter, we'll go three and 10. Three is prime, can't go any further down that branch. 10 is not prime, we've got two factors of 10, which would be two and five. Two is prime and five is prime. So what do we notice this time? We've got no pairs, a three, a two, and a five. Okay, so there's nothing that we can pull out of the root because we don't have any pairs, we don't have any squares here. So if I take the root, again, everything that does not have a pair gets multiplied back inside the root, which means that this one doesn't really simplify. Three times two times five, six times five, which is 30. So the square root of 30 is just the square root of 30 and we're not able to simplify this one because there are no perfect squares that we can pull out to the front. Okay, so that's your lesson on simplifying radicals. Two different methods. Um, which method is best? It's whichever one makes the most sense to you. Hope you found this video helpful. If it did, um, give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more of these lessons. I appreciate it very much. Share it with somebody that you think it would also benefit and we will see you next time.